Okay, and this brings us to the story that I opened up last week about my wife and I going to the Jehovah's Witness Church. Okay, that's why you guys are here this week. Okay. Okay, look. Okay, first of all, before I say anything, I want to tell you that Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or any, any, anybody, anybody who doesn't know the Lord, anybody else, aren't our enemies. The point of telling you guys this story is to give you a heart for them that we could love on them and show them the truth of what God has showed us. That's it, okay? This is not bagging on anybody else. If God hadn't revealed himself to us, we'd be in the same position they are. We're no better as human beings just because we're here. It's only because of what God did for us. Okay, that being said, this is how it happened, okay? A couple weeks ago on Palm Sunday, they had a, in fact, I got this here. They had a, what they call a memorial of Jesus' death, okay? How we got there is they came and they put this little thing on my front door. Yeah, okay. Well, I saw the words on the front here that say, Memorial of Jesus' death. And that piqued my interest. Because, again, the first thing I thought to myself is, how do you have a funeral for someone who is alive? That doesn't make any sense to me. And so the Lord just put it on my heart. And he was like, you got to go to this. Okay, look, it was after church on Sunday. Two weeks ago, Palm Sunday. It was after church. I don't know if you guys have seen me after church. I don't look good. I'm spent. It's over for me. But the Lord just, I don't, he just, we were sitting at the house, and it was like two hours before. It was like 7 o'clock at night or something, like late. Two hours before, and she was like, do you want to go to that thing? And I'm like, no. No, I don't. But the Lord was like, you need to go. And I'm like, fine, we'll go. Okay, so we went. We parked out front. The place is packed. Okay, it's not a huge building, but the place is packed. Parking lot packed. We had to park in the parking lot next to it, outside the gate. Okay, well, we get out and we walk through and we come in and the building's L-shape and you come through and there's a hallway that's kind of wide, like an entrance, foyer type thing. And then you come to the main sanctuary. So we walk through And we come to the edge of the main sanctuary and it felt like every head in the room just went like this and looked at us. I mean, I was wearing this, like, you know, what I preached in that day. And Irene was wearing like a shirt and some pants and everything. Everybody in there was dressed to the nines, like dresses, full on suits, like with a vest and with with a a tie and everything, like the whole shabam, you know. And so they knew we weren't from around there. You know, like, they're like, oh, these are some new people. So we walk in, and uh, there was, a, like, three rows from the back. There was two seats, and I'm like, okay, perfect. We could just, like, slip in right here and sit down. No one ever know we're here, right? So I went to go sit there. I'm headed that direction, and an usher comes up to me, and he goes, hey, how are you? And I go, oh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? And I, like, I point. I even pointed to right there as if to say, I'm going to go sit right there. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. We have a place for you. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, you knew we were coming? <laughs> they take us all the way up to the front of the sanctuary. All the way up to the front. There's, there's a row in the front with a bunch of dudes in suits, which we assume were the elders. And then the row right behind was empty. There was one lady sitting in the back. The place is packed. There was hardly, that's why I was looking in the back row. I'm like, well, there's two seats here. Let's just sit here. The place is packed. No one in that second row. One lady sitting on the end, and that was it. And of course, he brings us to there, and he's like, oh, yeah, go sit right there. I'm like, thanks a lot. Right in the front. You see, they were trying to make a spectacle out of us. Trying to show everyone else, oh, there's new people here. You can see the way they're dressed. They ain't never been here before. So we sit down, and man, if there was ever a time that you felt every eye on you, it was right there in that moment. I swear, like, the back of my head, it was getting hot. 
People were looking at me. I'm telling you. I'm sure you felt the same way. Like, oh my God. It was, right? You feel like you're in a place you don't belong. And it was true. So we're sitting there and we look up at the front and, and right next, there's like a, you know, like a podium. And then there's a table with like four or five wine glasses and like four or five small plates of bread, like salad plates size. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I've only ever been to Christian churches and a Catholic church, well, Catholic churches, right? And so I'm like, okay, this happens one of two ways. I'm thinking at this point, it's going to be like Catholic church. Like everybody comes up to the front, takes their bread, takes their drink, and then they go sit back down, okay? Well, I have this in the back of my mind, and I'm like, okay, this is no problem. Like, I'll take communion, you know? Sounds good. Like, if anyone has the right to take communion, it's us who know who Jesus is, and we're bought by his blood and his body, right? So I'm taking communion. Well, then the guy gets up there, and the first thing I thought was interesting, he starts, you know, this memorial of Jesus' death, right? So he starts talking about the Last Supper. But he took half a verse, I think he said, um, uh, he said, as often as you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. He took that half of the verse, and then he went off, started talking about something else. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Like, if we were talking about, like, the death of Jesus, you think he would have read, like, that section, you know? Talk about, like, what happened. But he didn't. He started talking about, take it, another thing over here, another verse over there, another verse. Well, it gets to the point where I'm seeing, like, oh, he's just taking, like, a verse here, half a verse there, verse here, half a verse there. I'm like, that's interesting. So I start reading the scriptures around the verse or half a verse that he took. And I start to see that if you read the section, it completely contradicts the thing that he was saying about that half a verse that he read. And I'm like, oh, this isn't good. Like, I, okay, here, I knew it wasn't going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be this bad either, okay? Because, I mean, in a, like, we just go through the scriptures, right? In context, just reading verse by verse, and then I'll just talk about what we just read. That's it, Okay? He's all over the map here. And I'm like, man, this is not a good thing. First, you can't even follow him, number one. And then the verses all, are all over the place and completely contradictory to what he's saying. So finally, he gets to communion. And I'm like, okay, this is where my heart starts pumping because I'm like, what's going to happen now? Because I was thinking the whole time, oh, I'm taking communion, right? Well, then he proceeded to say, we're going to take communion and says something to the effect of 144,000 people are going to go to heaven. And he kind of explains their theology on that. Yeah, 144,000, they believe 144,000 people only get to go to heaven. That's it. 144,000, that's it. Okay? And then he proceeds to say that unless the Holy Spirit has told you that you're going to heaven... You can't take communion. So I was like, oh boy. This got even more interesting now. Because the whole time I thought I was taking communion. Yeah, no problem, I'll take communion. But now I was thinking, if I took communion, they might riot in this place. <laughs> because he told us, oh, last year, two million people came to their Jesus funeral, right? Right? And I'm like, 2,144,000. The math didn't line up for me. Well, then, I, this is what they believe. 144,000 only go to heaven. And the rest of the people, because they have more than 144,000 in their church now. So this is a new theology that they have. The rest of the people get to live eternally on the earth. Okay? Now... The ones that get to go to heaven, he likened to our government, saying that those people that are in heaven will be governing the people who are living eternally on the earth. And so he said, you know, like we elect officials here, send them to Washington, D.C., and they govern the nation. Yeah, this, okay. It, 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 was, it was a bad picture, okay? But that's what he said. Like, they're going to be the, the governing board 
of the people who are here on the earth. And I'm like, oh boy, Lord, like this ain't good. Like we're, we're up here in front, like we can't even hide when we're taking communion, right? What are we going to do? And he's like, you're taking communion. And I'm like, oh no, I, no, I don't think that's a good idea. No. It's the conversation I'm having inside with the Lord. I'm like, no, this is not a good idea, Lord. I don't think this is going to go over well. And he goes, you're taking communion. And I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah, praise the Lord. So we're sitting there, second row. Guess who the plate comes to first? Pull that plate out. Second row, first ones, right? It goes to the lady on the end, and she hands it to me. I take a piece of bread. And I hand it to my wife, and I go, take it. She's like, <laughs> right? She passed it on. Well, I'm thinking, okay, it's coming around like this, right? Which means everyone's going to take theirs, and then we're all going to eat together, and then we'll move on. You know, like we do here, okay? Well, it got all the way to the 152, 150-some people there. The place is packed. And... The, the bread gets all the way to the back and the ushers pick it up and they're walking down the aisles and I look over at them and the plate of bread was just as full when they got back to the front as when it passed us. Nobody took any. And I was like, hmm. So he goes, the guy goes back up to the podium and he immediately starts talking about the cup. And I'm like, wait a second, are we not eating this together? Well, nobody's eating. So they have no reason to talk about that. No reason to say, oh, let's eat together. Nobody's eating it. And so I'm just like, okay, fine, I'm just going to eat it. So I ate it, and I turned to her, and I'm like, eat it. And she's like, no. And I'm like, eat it. She's like, you know, we like did one of those. Well, then he starts talking about the cup. And he's like, wine this and wine that and wine this and wine that. And here's the thing. If you know me, you know I don't drink. I don't drink any alcohol whatsoever. It started like six years ago or so when the Lord was calling me to be a pastor. He said, no more alcohol. And so I just stopped. So he's wine this and wine that. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Oh, you know I can't take this, Lord. It, I don't think that's grape juice up there. I think that's real wine. He's saying wine, wine, wine. I'm like, you know I can't take this, Lord. Like, you told me no alcohol. And he was like, who are you not drinking for? Are you not drinking for me? Or are you not drinking so you could tell everyone you don't drink and, like, boost your own ego? And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> I know. So I turn to my wife and go, we're drinking this. She's like, no. And I'm like, we're drinking this. Here's the thing. When you pass the bread around, you take a little piece of bread. You could hide that, right? You could like, take that. Nobody knows. But you have to drink out of a wine glass. Everyone's going to know, right? You have to go like this. The whole place is going to see you. You can't hide it. So we're sitting there. They finally get to it. First place it comes to is us again. The lady hands it to me. I take a swig, hand it to Irene. I go, drink it. She goes, no. I go, drink it. <laughs> she goes like this, <laughs> like that, right? Just a splash, just a little splash, okay? She hands it to the lady next to her, and she said the lady gave her the dirtiest look, like, you know what I'm saying? You know. She's like, well, it goes all the way to the back. I'm watching them. They bring it back up to the front. The wine glasses are still just as full as they were when they came by us. I'm like, nobody else drank it. Nobody drank it. I couldn't believe it. I, I could not believe it. Nobody drank it. The last row they passed it to was the front row. All the elders. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch them. Pass it along. Goes down, there's like, I don't know, eight, ten of them in the, in the row. Not one of them drank it. Not even one. We were the only people that took communion. 152 people in the room, two people took communion that night. 
That's what he said. He said, if you're going to heaven, you take communion. I said, I'm taking communion then, I guess. Here I am. But what saddened me about the whole thing, none of them believe they're going to heaven. Not even the elders, not even the leaders in the church believe they're going to heaven. And if the leaders don't believe, how could anybody else believe? There's a reason nobody else took communion. It's because the leaders don't even take communion. If they don't believe, nobody else could believe it. They, they, they were making a spectacle out of us that night. They wanted to make a spectacle. Say, hey, look at these new people. God didn't make a spectacle out of us that night. Mm. No. I don't even think it was good wine. I mean, I, I haven't drank wine in a while, but it wasn't even good wine. Let me get through this and I'll come to you first, okay? Because I, I get it. There's going to be time for questions, okay? Okay. The saddest part to me is that the row right behind us, there's a family sitting there and they have these two precious little girls that they're holding in their arms. And the thought that came to my mind is, look, if they continue on this path, they're not going to heaven. They're not going to have a relationship with the Savior that loves them so much. They're not going to. Look, we need to pray for these people. We need to pray for the people who don't believe in the Lord. These people are caught in a terrible, terrible system. But the Lord can set them free. But it takes his people to pray. It takes his people to get on their faces and to pray that his spirit would go out into the world and would take the veil off of their eyes that they would see the truth. Isn't that what it says about the Jews? Paul says, even though their Savior, their Messiah has come, the veil remains over their eyes that they cannot see the truth. Pray. That's what we have to do. Look, it, maybe you're not the type of person to go out there and to share your faith with somebody else. Maybe you're not the type of person to step into a Jehovah's Witness church. But you could pray. Any of us could pray. And if that's your job, you need to be praying for the people who are going out and doing. You need to be praying that the Spirit of God will go out before these people and convict hearts and take the veil off of their eyes that they could see the truth too. Remember uh, Anna? This is just coming I believe her name was Anna, who was in the temple uh, waiting for the Messiah of Israel. It says that she lived with her husband from the time she was a virgin for seven years, and then he died, and she went into the temple when she was 84 years old, and she did nothing but pray and fast her whole life. She never left that temple. And yet, God decided to make her one of the people, one of the first people to see Jesus as a baby in the temple for the first time on the eighth day as he was being circumcised and named. You think God doesn't have a purpose for those who pray and who fast? Oh, think again. He's got a great purpose for them. And he's got a great work. Do the work. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of a prophet, of a preacher. You might not have that gift, but the Lord can use you in their life. Yeah, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for this place. Thank you for the word that you've given us, God. Thank you that you've given us the truth, that you've taken the veil off of our eyes. God, and you have blessed us to see the truth. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.